So this is the meeting of the Public Safety Commission. The date is August 5th, 2015. This is all per the instructions of this camera. I didn't realize I was supposed to be doing this at the time. So I'm calling to meet to order. Um, first item on the agenda is approval of last meeting's minutes. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, the minutes from the last meeting have been approved as they stand. Hi, Andrew. Okay. 
and she helped the country in the job. Yep. All right. Uh, so let's see. I uh, also spoke with Alan Seawald. I got some um, good guidance from him regarding um, the concept of a water into trees model that we that I introduced the, uh, at last meeting, where uh, Durham, North Carolina, actually makes it possible for people to donate to a tree fund via their water bill. And um, uh, let me just pull pull up the the correspondence I got from Alan because I thought it was interesting. There's a lot of good information. Okay. Uh, he wrote. So so I, I asked him if, if something like this were legal. So that's really what I wanted to understand. And the bottom line is, it is legal. The city can collect um, funds for something like this. Um, and one of the things, so, so I'm just going to read what he said. Uh, there are two ways to raise money for municipal tree planting that would avoid any possible conflict. First, a Friends of Northampton Trees could be established as a 501c3 and controlled by individuals concerned with our urban treescape, but who are not members of our commission. This is the model used by the National Education Foundation and the Friends of Forest Library. Of course, the downside with this model is that the nonprofit corporation, not the city, would control the funds. The other approach would be similar to the web page link you provided to Water and Trees, which is not directed to any specific person or groups of people. Money raised in this way could be would be restricted gifts, expenditure of which would require uh, city council approval. The issue arises when commission members make direct or targeted solicitations of money. Direct solicitation raises the specter of coercion, particularly when directed to individuals or groups, such as downtown business owners, who have dealings with the city, such as meeting permits or licenses, or those who contract with the city to provide goods or services. The requests for money from such individuals or groups can be coercive even if they are not intended to be so. Again, non-targeted requests on a web page or radio, etc., etc., are permissible because there is no potential for coercion, real or perceived. Um, and then I, I just said, I, I replied back saying, if I hear you correctly, the water and trees model would be legal, and he affirmed that it would, because I, you know, just wanted to make it absolutely <laughs> clear. Um, and then he said, he followed up with something that I found was interesting and a little bit like, really? Um, he said, no problem, Lily. One other detail I should have mentioned, although not part of your inquiry. The commission can accept gifts of funds without any authorization from the city council. It cannot accept gifts of personal property, such as trees from a tree nursery, without city council approval. Money is okay. Other gifts need approval. Good luck. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> so, really? who would have thought? <laughs> I mean, he's the city solicitor, sure, so yeah, he knows the nursery stuff. Because some physical gifts have some liability associated with it for maintenance uh, or upkeep and so the city wants to know what they're getting. Okay. All right. Well anyway, that that at least answers our first question about this whole model of fundraising. So then my next question is do you want me to just contact the city during and learn more about this? Can, can, I, can I ask that we follow the balance confirmed that we would have control of those funds rather than going back to the general fund? Yeah, it would be restricted. That was clear to me in his email. He's, it would be restricted, but it would require city council yeah. to use it. To use it. Okay. To spend it. Right. But it would be completely restricted. Mm -hmm. So it would, the, the, it would be earmarked for the tree. It would be in a, in a yeah, earmarked. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I believe that they are tax Those are the kinds of questions I can ask. So if you guys have questions you want me to ask the city of Durham, I just thought that I would go to the next step and do some more research. All right, so that's um, that piece. And then let's see, what else we got? I also heard from Wayne Fyden about um, providing conservation land to create a tree nursery. And um, he wrote back. Back. Um, I'm on vacation this week, but I can assess our holdings next week. Most of our properties have so many protections that a nursery is probably not legal, but we might have some that qualify, and perhaps some of the acquisitions that we're, we're working on would. 
Can you give me a sense of three things? One, would a nursery qualify as a tree farm, which might allow it to qualify in one place? I assume that means like a farm. Two, what is the maximum height that trees would grow, grow to, friends, and issue in one place before being moved? And three, would a floodplain site qualify? So maybe, Jay, you have to uh, send all of these names, and I'll forward you this, and we can have a chat. You did forward I did forward it to you. OK. Um, do you want to talk about it? I mean, in the, in the interest of time, I'd rather that we talk about it just between ourselves and, and then bring it back to you guys. Um, I also just wanted to um, say that Jen Werner is also exploring the potential of a, um, a tree nursery with Spitlow and then also had the idea to explore a possibility of a partnership with the jail for um, establishing and maintaining the tree nursery. Yeah, that's right. So you want me to, I mean, the, the Smith Boat thing has to wait till school starts because he's not around. Yeah. But uh, um, I, I'm happy to get in touch with the jail. I, if anybody has a name. Sure, go The, the <laughs> share, share I should just go right to the, okay. All right, I'm happy to. I might be able to get you some other names too. Okay. I'm I have some connection with the jail, but I probably should. It wouldn't be best to go Um. Okay. The last thing is that I did get some um, sample letters from the Amherst Tree Committee. Did I pull this in? Sorry, now that's now you're interested in context. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, a uh, did I forward you the sample letters I got from the Amherst Published Aid Tree Commission? Okay. Um, well, they. Uh, let me see. What These are very brief, so I'll, I'll just go oh, back here. I'm going to go forward to you guys these. Um, but basically, the, um, the Tree Commission is reminded uh, realtors, landscapers, and the general public about Mass Federal Law 87 um, because there, were, um, there was one homeowner that removed just a whole slew of trees in preparation for uh, installing solar panels on his house. I mean, like over ten thousand dollars worth of trees. Um, he just because he thought they were on his property, and they weren't. So they use that as a as a great example to the public to say, hey, before you touch any tree, make sure it's not a public tree. Um, they did not talk about um, best practices in these letters. So I'm going to go ahead and just draft a letter um, that I'll I'll send you guys by the next meeting that uh, addresses both. Um, Master and Law 87 and best practices, and then but I, but I do have some. I asked if I could plagiarize their letter, and, they said, and that's a letter that we're talking about including like a water bill, or something like that. yeah, and a water bill, and maybe something tweaked for the landscape companies, arborists. Um, I'm not sure what just happened. <laughs> what somebody spilled it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Don has it. Um, okay, that is actually, I tried to go so fast, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I felt like I was not giving anyone the time to react to anything, but I really wanted to make time for this draft ordinance. So, um, do folks have that? I didn't make copies of it, but I think I should have ordered it. I don't The ordinance? Yeah. yeah, well, you have the connection. Uh, I, I see. Oh, the original draft. No, not the original draft. Or the draft. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't know. Uh, I only had what you looked at. Yeah, okay. Fine. That's my bad. I should have sent you guys the original. I have it. I have an original, probably. You have an original. Yeah. I'm not pretty sure I did it for one second. No, that's not it. Um, uh, hold on. Are you done? Hi, I'm hey, done. are you okay for being on at 4.30? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. A little okay. early. Uh, that's you got it. You got it. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, really so, Molly, you, you had a chance to look at the original. 
Did you also look at Tad's comments? Yes. Oh, great. Okay. Do you mind if I just jump right to you since you have some expertise in this area? Sure. Yeah, I just gave away copy. Yeah, but I don't have a director. I think we should give it back. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll get it back. Um, so, some of my comments were the same as your comments, so I didn't think those comments necessarily. Um, some of its definitions, um, terms come up that aren't defined that might make it harder to enforce, um, remove in obvious, but would a removal count if the tree died and you were at the construction project and, you know, action practices weren't adequate? You know, if that comes to the removal or is it just when the tree comes down, um, non-invasive? Um, these are the terms you'd like to see These are the terms. Tree inventory plan. And I, I can... So would that be like a little vocabulary section? It's, it's actually here them. in the okay, front. Yeah. Um, and I, I would advise expanding on it. Um, maintenance and tree protection plan. Good health. <laughs>
I think acknowledging some somewhere in our comments that this is, you know, we may not want to use the word stopgap, but it's a, it's a ordinance designed around a specific purpose, but that a, a more comprehensive tree protection ordinance needs to be created that can, you know, within a year, hopefully solve a lot of these inconsistencies and then deal with not only public safety protection and driveway issues, but you know, incorporate this into it as well. And that just was great. Good. All right. So, um, what is the next step? Uh, well, I think we, we probably take a vote on the general comments and we can finalize a submittal to go to the uh, committee that's reviewing the ordinance for the uh, council. I just have one more clarification question if I heard this right. So, so kind of the longer term intention is this is a quote temporary document or or it, it could be. it's a permanent document but our intention is to in a year or whatever make a broader um, like amend this document is that what you're saying i think it would probably be a separate word yeah yeah and it would be a chance to clean up a little bit more like but you know the, a lot of the ordinances online uh, that, are, that are references, best practices. They're, they're you know, much more robust yeah. and deal with more than just what this ordinance is trying to protect against, which is kind of a, a shell game of applications where you cut everything down and then you go in for your approval for a site plan. So it's trying to say, you know, it's trying to get in front of it while these are more protective of trees in general, it incorporates shade tree protections and deals with driveway issues, et cetera. But it, it, it's not just geared towards stopping someone from playing the shell game the time. So it would be an uh, agile. Yeah, yeah, there might be yeah, there might be some need to clear up and you know change and make it more comprehensive and maybe this morphs into it or disappears, but you know, that'd be a bit more of a robust project that we can work with. That's that's okay. something that you yeah. kinda of kicked out of the okay. yeah. right. Yes. So I was, that is if you're just going to hand in suggestions for changes rather than writing your Yeah, or You don't. You don't think that we should provide specific language? I mean, don't we have more control when we... Um, I mean, because if we just say we need to define what is a you know, healthy tree, then we're leaving it up to Wayne's office to find where we can provide the language, then he has less wiggle room to reject it. I mean, he can still reject it, but he's less likely. Um, well, he, 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 he has said he wouldn't want to be on the board as well. Yes, he has a team that was a little bit. I don't know that Wayne said that. I don't know what Wayne said that. Well, he definitely said that. I wasn't here for Wayne. Wayne was saying that Parker didn't get the business. Well, I'm just, I can't help it. Um, I, um, For some of the key terms, I think, you know, we can do some quick searches in the model bylaws and grab some definitions that we think look good. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, certainly referencing ANSI is, is designed to say, you know, just use all, you know, they define pretty much everything in the universe, so. Well, we'll have a different, will we have another strike in this? No. I mean, we will. Okay. So let me let me just try to break this down a little bit. First of all, does anyone have any objection to any of the recommendations that either Molly or Todd made? Okay. So that's our first step. Is that we all agree that these are our, these are changes that we'd like to see to the ordinance. Now the question is, how do we present to these recommended changes? Do we just hand them to Molly's comments, Todd's comments, or do we? Hey, Marilyn. Uh, Molly, can you provide the definitions for most of those things that you said were, were not well defined? Yeah. I mean, the trick is to try to be good health. Um, yeah. Good health. <laughs> good health would be the definition of good health. Um, oh, that's really helpful. <laughs> but yeah, we can. They're, they're, well, 
I don't know. I mean, is there, I mean, this is referencing in capital letters the train inventory plan. Is that defined somehow? No, uh, that's saying, I think that's saying that each piece of property would submit a tree inventory plan as part of the site plan process. Okay. So then I can't. So, yeah, and I did not go and cross reference that to what the zone requirements are for site plan applications. We can do that and see how they how they define that. Yeah. Okay, so my next question is do the two of you have time to, to get together by email, phone, or in person one more time to just tighten this up? We can empower you to tighten it up and present it as the commission's recommendation. Well then, I, um, I, I made a motion to, for us to do that. I try to avoid, as the chair, by the way, to make motions because it helps to distribute the power. Okay, so um, Rob is making a motion to um, accept the suggested changes by Molly and Todd and empower them to um, get together on our behalf to provide a final recommend, uh, document that can be changed. Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion? I guess the only thing I would say is I think it would be, I think it'd be a good idea to make the rewriting as clear as possible and not have, you know, I would just use their language and insert ours in a different color or something because I just think people who don't aren't familiar with trees I think they're gonna miss something, you know, or not know where it would be or that's you know I think it'd be a better format to really use. Is that doable Is it the PDF? Um originally it is a PDF but um, I mean I you know, you can generally pretty easily convert PDFs to Word documents. You know, just all on one software. I don't think it's a, it's a huge document. Now I don't want to yeah. make more work for somebody. I just think from a clarity point of view. Yeah. Well, would you like to be part of that then? Uh, because we're still under, under <laughs> you know, the subcommittee numbers. Drop dead date on this, right? Yes. Well, I think we used the 15th or 16th. I have to look back at my notes. I don't think we're going to drop dead. I don't think anyone's going to drop dead. And I think we're moving along pretty swiftly. So if someone says, you know, come on, guys, say we're coming as fast as we can with you, then I think it's going to be. We all agree though that which is which is a clear way of recommendation that the decision is the same I, I do agree. I agree that the, the more you can hold people's hands for these things, the more likely they're going to do it. If he has to go line by line, you know, our recommendation the document, he's just he's gonna miss something. It's, that would be my recommendation. But I, I realize that it's good if it's look. So we can track we can either try to convert it, get the word document from Wayne, and then you know, track changes with, you know, common right. points. Right, right. Okay. So I'm going to, and we're going to amend that motion just to say, um, so Terry, I'm like, poor thing, you were having them off the floor. <laughs> All this I don't get it from the recording. Oh, okay, that's true. So you're okay, so um, would you like to amend the motion to just add that we provide a, doc, a, a revised copy yeah, of the motion? Amend the motion to revise the ordinance that before us with our recommendations in the ordinance, in the body of the ordinance. You second? Second, yeah. Further discussion? Do you have those kind of? Yeah, I got them. Okay. So you can. I just wanted to make sure you had them. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
Okay. Thank you. Doug. Hi. Just a couple minutes late, but pretty close. Come to the table. There's a seat over there. <clears throat> um, welcome to the Public Shade Tree Commission meeting. Um, everybody, this is Doug McDonald. He is the stormwater manager right. for the city of Northampton. And how long have you been in this position? Uh, I've I worked for the city for about 12 years now oh. on stormwater. Um, I was doing so, you know, our purpose of inviting you here is just the, the realization that there's a really strong connection, symbiotic correlation between healthy tree canopy and stormwater management. And we just want to really um, help to make that connection as a robust one here in Hansen. And, um, both at the municipal level and down at the residential commercial level and um, you know have open a conversation with you about how we can best do that right. yeah well that's there's a huge connection I would say it's I completely agree um, I've been working uh, for years on trying to get the stormwater system in Northampton to start having components of filtering and treating the stormwater. It's, it, it, the system now is, a, as I don't know how much everybody knows about the stormwater system in Northampton, but it's Feel free to. It's old. It's, it's um, a lot of clay pipe, some stone pipes, but wood floors. I mean, this is, it goes back there to old distance over 150 years old. Um, and over the last 30 years, give or take, um, the city really hasn't touched that system. It's been just left to kind of decay and start falling apart. Um, and is that mostly and because of budget? Here? It's budget. It's all budget. Um, I, I'm amazed at how much was built in the past um, when City may not have had money, but they they decided it was worth putting in new systems. A lot of it was hand dug and, and put in, um, followed old brooks, and you know, a lot of it had to do with getting water off of a wet spot and making it go really fast to a river or something. And um, here we are in 2015, realizing it's not great to get it to go fast, really fast to a river because it's carrying pollutants off the road and um, you know without any treatment we have catch basins out, out there we have about 5,000 catch basins um, basic concept water goes in has a sump it lets some sediment settle out but a lot of pollutants flow right through that um, so that's really the only line of defense we have um, and since 2003 we've had a permit with environmental Protection agency to operate our system, and um, they say you can continue to discharge to all. It's about 230 different places in the city that the water comes out to rivers, questions. Uh, so we can keep discharging as long as we're doing X, Y, and Z. And they started off in 2003 with a fairly modest push to, to take some steps to, to start checking the quality of that water and understanding your system, mapping it, um, doing some public education, doing some outreach, but very modest. And then in 2008, that permit was supposed to be redone, and it never was. It got extended and extended. We're finally going to get a new permit, we think, in, in, at the end of this year, which is going to start pushing a little bit harder for the city to uh, really start to look at the quality of that water coming out of the system. Um, the, the quality and the quantity of the water, uh, looking at um, uh, making improvements to the city system. Uh, things like green infrastructure, which is, I don't know if people have heard about green infrastructure, but it's instead of building more pipes and 
gray infrastructure to build more educated systems to, to take pollutants out. So uh, water quality swales, uh, rain gardens, uh, all that kind of stuff. And, and we've been, the city has tried to take some proactive approach to uh, to building these. And the road projects that we've done on Con Street and on North Street, we've added some uh, water quality swales on those. At this point, they're just grass, so, so it's getting the water off the pavement and it's getting filtered through the, the soil and the grass. And, um, but there's a lot more that, that we can do. We, we had some, some college students look at um, city properties and, and what we could do to improve um, and putting green infrastructure on city properties and along city roadways, so we have some priority sites there. Um, we, as everybody probably knows, about a, a year ago, we, we started a stormwater utility, um, stormwater and flood control utility, which um, is an attempt to try to get more money to fund the, not only the stormwater system, but the flood control system, um, which in the, in the near future, a lot of our focus is going to be on the flood control system, which is another system that's been neglected. Um, and we need to kind of catch up on our maintenance and, and repair. So, um, so we're working on, you know, all of a sudden we have a funding source. We have a new EPA permit coming out. We're being asked to do more, but we want to do more. There's, there's, there's systems in the city that need to keep working, and we know we need to do a better job of making work. And, and just to get back to trees, trees are definitely a, a part of, of everything that I've mentioned. That, that a lot of these green systems, green infrastructure, include plants. And if you can get trees in these systems, that's even better. Uh, trees will take up a lot of water in the leaves and the roots. Uh, but we've built, we've spent years building a system that funnels the water inside the roadway. It keeps it in the roadway and then gets it in pipes gets it to the river. So it's it's going to be a step-by-step -step thing, but we're going to need to start kind of breaking up that whole system and, and cutting off um, EPA really, they, they're interested in, in disconnecting impervious surfaces. So taking the flow off the street instead of having it go right down the cash base and send it off into a vegetated area. Um, and we've tried to get some grants in those areas. We haven't been successful yet, but we now, we, we, I, I'm hopeful that in the next few years, we're going to start putting some money from the utility into these types of things. There's going to be, um, you know, instead of building, continuing to build more of the same traditional infrastructure, we'd like to start adding on and, and disconnecting the impervious area. I got an email today uh, about the mayor of Indianapolis that had some street streetscaping to do in, in downtown. In Indianapolis, a lot of their systems combined sewer and stormwater, so there were flows regularly across sewage to the, to the rivers and stuff. So they're trying to reduce how much water goes to those systems. We, we don't have that problem in North um, but. Uh, the mayor came up with a, a, a really simple way of, of and, and this isn't the first, but just of taking the road water and can pass this around, just sending it into a tree. Um, you know, and there's tree box filters, there's all kinds of uh, different ways of doing this, but this was just a, a local solution that was cheaper to do. And, and that's part of what I'd like to talk about today is that, you know, I, I, more trees along the roads only helps reduce stormwater, so it's definitely a good thing. I, I don't need to be convinced about that at all. But something we need to work on is getting that water from the road to the trees that can help, um, especially in downtown, downtown Florence. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to get trees to survive. They don't have enough soil um, and room for their roots, but they also don't have enough water. And, and here we are taking water and piping it away. So um, I think 
think there's definitely opportunities. And we tried last year to get a grant to put in three box filters along Main Street. And unfortunately, we didn't get the grant, but we're going to keep, keep trying to, to do something. The tree box filters, um, which is basically it's it's like this, but it, it's even bigger. It's a it's a concrete box that, and then you fill that with soil that's that's a little looser than um, what may be there, and then the water goes through a curve inlet down into that soil system. It gets filtered through the through the roots. That was a, it was a Massachusetts, I'm forgetting exactly, we worked with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on it. They eliminated the whole grant program. Oh, yeah. So you, um, so you would like to pursue funding for that, for that sort of tree box project? Yeah, and yeah. And so, we, so, um, you know, and that would require some planning of where trees would go. Right. And, you know, and so that's kind of a recon. Right, right. These um, are all in the right of way. These are all right. hopefully shade trees. They're, okay. not, they're not, you know, you'd like them to last. And that's the problem with some of the street trees, especially in the urban, in the downtown, is that they don't last. They, they, um, and so, you know, I'm trying to figure out if there's ways to solve. We, we need to reduce the amount of stormwater and filter the stormwater. Um, and these systems work to do both and also um, help trees. Um, I think there are you know, caveats to that, like if you're sending a lot of salt into the trees, there could be issues. So you want to put in trees that are salt tolerant, perhaps in some spot. Um, uh, but that's, we are, we're going to continue to look for ways I know, to find funding on Pleasant Street. Uh, Wayne is working on a, uh, a grant to, it's a MassWorks grant to uh, improve the streetscape there, and, and they're looking at some tree box filters and different ways to. Okay. Uh, I, I have a question. Anyone else has one? Can you too? But, um, so, in terms of you kind know, of lowest hanging fruit for managing stormwater in our, you know, as far our our domain is really public shade trees, so it's not wetlands and it's not park trees and so forth. But as as um, far as public shade trees go, do you feel like street trees, like you know, ones that actually have a canopy that covers the street, is the is the best way? Of, of managing stormwater, is that what we should be emphasizing? I think that's that definitely helps, yeah. If you can get a bigger canopy, there's, there's no doubt that that. So do you feel helps. like... I mean, that's the thing. There's these type of tree box filter, that kind of thing. But then there's, how do you get a tree to grow yeah. that big? And, and um, you know, I've been, over the years, I've, I've been trying to push it from different angles on this, not always from a stormwater angle, but, but in subdivision um, uh, proposals, like up at Village Hill, there was a, a part of the development was very clustered together and they were going to plant street trees in very tight space. And, and the question was, how do, you, how do you get those trees to survive and grow to, to have that canopy? Um, and in some places, and this may be more urban and maybe more expensive than what is, is necessary here, but there's there's soils that can be put in, that structural soils that allow roads, infrastructure to be built on it, but this fact it allows tree roots to grow um, further out, sometimes under the road without ruining the road, under the sidewalk without ruining the sidewalk, by giving it a, a place to go. And, um, you know, I, I, I work on stormwater and I work on permitting for um, stormwater permits for projects. So, so I push at times as much as I could to try to say, hey, but these trees, you, you want to get trees to grow taller. From a stormwater perspective, it's better. Um, and I, uh, you know, I'll continue to, to push that. So, you know, I agree. It's, it's that, that, that is definitely a, a shared goal. 
So all uh, the reason why I'm just trying to understand. So all things being equal, like you know, you utility wire and interference notwithstanding and so forth, do you feel like we should be emphasizing the long streets, trees that have very large canopies, so that we get the maximum? From a stormwater point of view, yes. 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 It's the mechanism that is the, the what land on the leaves and other things around. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the bigger the canopy. It's also what's stored in the tree itself. You know, when you think of it, it's kind of like a giant pump where it takes the water from the ground. So the it's also full of water. Right. So some trees store a lot of water. Yeah, yeah, a lot of water. But that's, yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah. Part, part of what I'm trying to say. So you've got this, this tree that's, that's paved around, and so much, all the water is going away. For a lot of it, the, the trees are catching a lot of it, but you can get more of the water in that area to that, to the roots. And that's something that's you know, going to take individual, can we, can we modify something here to get the water off and get it to the roots and give this tree a better chance of growing? I, I asked just because we're, we're about to undertake a, a fairly large planting in the fall and then in the fall and spring. And, and you know we're looking at what is our planting plan, and um, it sounds like we really want to emphasize when we can, if, if there is a site where that can support a really big tree that would provide those kind of benefits, we should absolutely prioritize big trees for those kinds of sites, and not waste good sites on little flower trees or something. Right. right. Yeah, I would agree. And then yeah. what about like things like the topography of, of the street? Like you know, one that is on a you know the series or anything like that. Is there any? I mean, from the stormwater point of view, that again, if you can break it up, so it's a street that's sloped, that water is going to be heading downhill and running way fast. If you can break that up and keep it from going as fast, slow it down, get it off the road, get it into. Like, should we be prioritizing some of those streets? that really face um, flooding because the water all comes right. together. I'm thinking of a church street or, you know, well, it's, above, above from. Right, you wouldn't want, I mean, church street is, you'd want to look where yeah, all right. the, where, where the water is coming from. Um, yeah, I would agree, the neighborhoods that, that feed into that, um, you'd want to add more trees. Another area we have flooding, uh, Elm Street Brook, which runs um, under the high school parking lot. Um, it floods down um, Elm Street along just below the hospital there. Um, that brook uh, picks up a lot of the stormwater from Florence, downtown Florence. Um, the watershed is pretty big. Um, the, the pipe solution is ridiculous expensive, you know, 15 to 20 million dollars to actually solve that flooding problem. But we're trying to figure out ways to keep water up where it is, Florence Center has always struck me as a place that this, this soils there are sandy and the water goes right down the drain. And yet, it, a lot of it's paved over, so the water's not going down into it. And, I, and I've heard that they're at, they've had a hard time getting trees to live in Florence Center. Um, you know, I would say a lot of that is they don't have water. They don't, the, it's sandy, the water just disappears very quickly. Not enough nutrients in, in the soils, perhaps. I don't know. So how do you get? How do you break that up and, and get the water off the road or off the parking lots and into places where the trees are and help that process? And that would, at the same time, solve the flooding problem down below uh, to some extent. Just you know, a little bit. Stormwater best management practices for new development. We do. Yeah. So like in the new uh, office building uh, at the, right in downtown Florence. It's 100% of stormwater generated on that site infiltrated in It's, it's site not. Site. So, so um, we have best management practices that generally deals with you can take a site and are you, how much impervious are you having? So that site was paved and it was a mobile station. So they took that and said this is what it is now and this is what it's going to be actually reduce the amount of impervious. So they weren't they have a couple dry wells on the property yeah. right now. But the way our 
this may change, but the way our uh, stormwater ordinance is written now, um, we don't go beyond the state standards for stormwater, which is, so for redevelopment, that's, there's sort of a baseline that's established and we can't pass it anymore. Unfortunately, it's, it's just, um, that's, that's how it is. Well, in some could, places so like that. Under local ordinance, you could. Yeah, the, the city local. could change so that 100% of stormwater generated on a site is infiltrated on that site through green stormwater management practices. Definitely, definitely. Um, you, can, you can change the ordinance to say that, but you would have to convince the Chamber of Commerce and all the city councilors that um, redevelopment, making redevelopment difficult is something they can, they can agree to. So, you, you know, that's, this is, I, I understand your question, but that's. Well, but that, now that right your site has to pay into the stormwater utility, right? It does. Right. It does. But if they were able to infiltrate 100% of the stormwater on the site. They can get credits. Right. Yeah. 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 But I like to turn that on its head. I just think there's a number of new developments. Is it going to be substantial enough to make an overall difference in the curve? So, but within the right of way, we're kind of unrestricted only by money and by time. And I think the solutions within the right of way are, are there's no there's no limit other than financially. And I think that's where you're going to see a greater return on the investment rather than because I've, I've worked with requiring a 25 percent reduction in it from the peak flow, and it's it's really hard to get beat up a lot, and developers hate it. But when you think about the actual impact it's going to make, it's you know, you know, a decimal, it's like a rounding error from the overall kind of impact of how much. I think within the public right away, dealing with that, I think that is completely sky the limit when it comes to actually making the difference. So right. I, don't and know. I, I would agree that that's and it's and it's not fair. We haven't done much in that. Well, we we focused on the development and the new development, but we've left we have a whole you know, area of neighborhoods in downtown um, and really haven't changed this scenario. And we have pipes that we know that are too small for stormwater. So, you know, we're at a point where do we spend money upsizing those pipes or do we try to reduce the flow to them? Reduce the flow. And if we can, Absolutely. right, if we can. It's like, yeah. it's it's all same, a project. same argument for, for growing pilots, you know. You build it, they will come, and then you're back where you started. So on the project, like Pleasant Street, where we have a chance to renew the and get the Yeah, yeah. So those to that point, well, those once important. you're doing it, right. is that's the time to do right. it. Right. Right. Soil or structural soil that's, yep. you know, so you got to rip up into it. Yeah. I think if you need any help with, like, literacy supports for grants or anything, I think, like, we can totally help you, you know, or, or help in any way possible. Mm -hmm. The town of Lynn Creek is the fact that the city is behind it, and it's a good thing, you know. And maybe even like we've got a line item in our budget, and maybe like we could commit to like providing the trees and professionals who are really qualified, you know, who can help with selection. And that way it's like kind of sweet the pot, you know, like a local match, yeah. you know. Yeah, and and um, you know, there's a, there's there's a lot of opportunities to. to to work together. The, the swales I mentioned that we put on our Con Street and North Street, we didn't we didn't plant them. And we could have put plants, we could have put trees in those, but um, and that would make would have made them better. Would, they, yeah. would, would it be bad to plant trees now? It, no, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. So, it, but it, but the money isn't there. No, no. Just uh, was that a finite like state funding? Yeah, it was yeah. part of the road project. Right. So that's it. Just. So it, just, it, it took work to actually get that piece in there. So if we have money for trees in places that we need to put the trees, and putting like a plant that likes the tree likes to get its feet wet in that swale, we got to be good. Right, right. Oh. And then deeper roots help the water help break up the soil, get the water deeper, help it infiltrate. So do you do you imagine that down the road the EPA or whatever other unfunding sources will become more? into the value of trees in stormwater and there will be more I, funding for this? Tree? I hope so. It's, it's, 
been kind of this thing over here. Like there's there's structures. There's, they have BMPs. There's still very gray infrastructure. Well, no, the they have green. They call it green infrastructure, but it doesn't. Trees are not. I haven't. I actually before this meeting, I I wanted to see do they list it anywhere as a BMP. Um, and it, it does management practice. So, um, um, you know, they have rain gardens, they have vegetated swales, and trees are in these things, but tree, just street trees and canopy, you know, and I found um, urban forestry, um, but, you know, there's a big push to try to have it recognized more as, you know, they've done studies on taking one lot and then one lot has 65% tree canopy, one has 25%, and, and what's the difference in terms of runoff? And it's significant. And, you know, it made me wonder with the stormwater utility, and I don't know how we'd actually do this, how we'd figure out how to track it, but could we offer credit in some way to a property that has over 65% tree canopy? Yeah. The trouble is, how, do we, how would we actually know that two weeks later they cut down a tree. It's yeah. just, yeah. we're trying to find credit so we can say, okay, you got this, and that's, we get the credit. But, but it made me think, how, how, do we, how do we get at that sort of legitimate, legitimizing trees in the tree canopy as a stormwater solution? Um, and I'm hoping the EPA will have, have it more as, as a recognized strategy. And, and we can, when EPA issues this permit, I was going to mention this, um, we have to write a new stormwater management plan for the city. And in that plan, we lay out to some extent what we're going to do. It's not completely detailed, but we're going to, we, we need to spell out these are the things that we're going to do in the next five years. Um, and that may be a place that we, mentioned trees, mm -hmm. street trees yeah. again, as, as a, one of the goals. And that would be a place where when that's happening, it would be good to hear from this uh, commission. Will you, will you um, be in touch with me yeah. when that comes yeah. down the pipe? Yeah. Um, and the other thing I just want to invite you to do is maybe go back and reflect, since we are doing uh, you know, 150 trees planting this fall next spring is if you do think of sites that you feel like we should prioritize, again, public shade trees, right. um, you know, from a, from a perspective that's Florence going on. Center is one that, that I'm, yeah, would be a good place to think about. It's hard to get trees to live there, and it's also... Until you improve the infrastructure, right. there's a way to I agree. The infrastructure, which... Getting the water to Put in structural soil, incorporate the rain garden. I don't know if you need structural soil there. That's what I mean. The problem really is that there's the not water. water. And, um, it, it, this is how simple it would be. You, you, the water flows along the curb line. And instead of going in a catch basin, you put a curb, you put a cut in the curb. Yeah. And you that pit still center that has a beautiful one. So right. Right. And I agree, it takes, it, it, it's a bigger, sometimes a bigger, you know, streetscaping project that this would be an add-on. But it may be worth picking a couple places and trying it. It would be a works. place to try it. I think you need to combine the two. Right, right. Well, it means there's not enough rooting volume. That's right. part of the problem with street fix. There's, yeah. It's like there's a simple calculation by tree mature tree caliber, how much volume the tree needs, and those pits are not enough. Thus, the strip of the yeah. strip of soil it takes that. And there's nowhere to store the water. Either. Right. All right, well, if you do think of any other sites yeah. in addition to that, yeah. um, please feel free to maybe email Rich and CC me. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to, you know, be strategic. Yeah. Especially about this first plan, to really show that we're getting it thought and, yeah. and we're using the city's resources.
So you, you, just so I understand, and I don't know a lot about it, what your plans are. Um, are you doing a planting this? We are. This year, so this we're fall? okay. Yeah, fall and spring. And then the other thing we're doing, probably more like in 2016, is, is a comprehensive treatment, professional run well, treatment, or to really get a snapshot of where we are, um, so that that'll be a launch point for creating a urban forestry. We're trying to start start big picture. Yeah. Great. I'm, yeah. I'm happy this commission was formed. All you guys are, are here. It's a bigger bigger group than I imagined. Yeah. Good. We're all are we all here? Yeah. All right. Well, philosophically, I'm I'm very reassured because it sounds like the direction is kind of the same way for everyone. So yeah. That's good. To yeah. Thank you for coming. And um, let's just keep the lines of communication open. And certainly, if you see anything that snips of a grant for <laughs> granting source for trees, yep. Yep. Uh, let us dive right in and support you in that, or you know, yeah. in whatever way we can help. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Yeah, Andrew, um, looks like you were passing something around. I stopped it in front of me because I couldn't figure out. Is this one page or multiple pages? Uh, okay. Back, so yeah. Come back. Okay. Everyone, pass, take one and pass along. This is Andrew wrote of a draft a letter of inquiry. Yeah. There's also the, the funding funders uh, packet of information. Guidelines. Okay.
so that if one of the recommendations is you remove all your app trees, there's something that we can go back to you know, philosophically, where does the community sit as far as this one question? Um, it might be too much to squeeze into the, to this proposal. Maybe we can put it on the table for a later uh, grant, and that's why I think it's great that Molly's here uh, because she can kind of ask, we can ask her, you know, which is not very often. <laughs> what would be best, you know, to, in order for us to get to get a proposal, and with the understanding that we're not going anywhere, you know, to, hopefully we still have funding, you know, for multiple years, and that I guess I think my understanding is that we're committed to a multiple year. Uh, process in order to get the best possible result. We're not trying to get everything done in one year. So um, I have a proposal, I'm not married to it by any means. I tried to keep the language as close as possible to what was in the requirements, what they were looking for, um, and that's pretty much it. So again, I don't really feel emotionally attached to it, so if you want to make changes, that's great. Uh, but also, I do think we should have some more questions. The different funding sources. So the funding sources. Oh, okay. I meant like the, <laughs> the different categories. Um, categories. Um, you know the resource assessment that might be like a canopy assessment. Um, you know, so really, if you're looking for something that. Get your inventory, do it all in one, one shot because you've got a 
picture at a specific point in time, and you know exactly what you have. And then you can add on to that or subtract from that. If you do it in pieces, you're never going to have that snapshot. I think that's important. I think it would also help us to get more information about what is our tree canopy, you know, how much of a canopy can we have, how much do we want, where do we need to improve it. We'll have that, all that information. Uh, we can get all that information from the end. So I think it's better to do it in one piece. Right. Yeah, we're trying to build momentum as a new commission So we have to be comfortable with the fact that for one year, most of our, our city resources for trees are, are going to go to this. I personally feel totally comfortable with that. I think it's a great use of our, our money for a few years. Um, heck, you know, this year alone, we're putting in four times as many trees as we've ever had in the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think we're I think we'll catch we'll catch up soon after because we'll have something to build on. Thank you. Um, we took out five thousand dollars for tree stock for planting. No, this is reduced to thirty to twenty five. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's, the range is between forty and sixty thousand yeah. dollars, depending upon the number of points that we need to sample. So, I mean, I guess it's like if we have ten thousand dollars left over for the whole year. I mean, it's still planting, you know, we're still planting. Planting right. or whatever other maintenance. Yeah, having some amount of planting. I mean, if we can do that. Well, our annual budget's forty, right. so we'd be only matching thirty. So we would have ten left over anyway. That helps. Yeah. And the match, remember the match doesn't have to be pure dollars. The match can also be Rich's time, it can be our time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's ways we can whittle down that so that we're not actually drawing the funds away from. Yeah. I just think it would be good to keep the, the planting some trees, even if it's a small amount, because our whole way of planting is you know, sort of creating a, a system of volunteers. To tell volunteers that, oh, well, you know, not this year, does take more time. So I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think we do both. I think we just have to be a little more crafty about planting trees that year. It still gives us like 40 to 45 trees, you know? Yeah. Which is still a good thing. And then all those donated ones that we need to be castle food. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> what price did you use? 225. Did you go with Jay out of the Amherst industry? All right, I'm going to keep us on. I'm going to keep us on task here. Are there any specific comments about this draft that Andrew thinks? I don't know if it's uh, in the grant stuff, but I definitely like to focus on this not being a paper document that sits on a shelf and incorporating it more into a, a database of some kind, whether that's online and accessible to people other than the tree board and. Uh, and but um, you know, having it more of a, a, an alive document that, can, that is a snapshot that can be changeable over time and is uh, integrated with uh, existing resources at uh, DPW. And, and possibly, you know, the city is, is um, updating its open space plan and every, at least every five years, so making sure that some of our recommendations get to that as well. Um, also, I talked to the teacher about having it accessible so that people in the community can add trees on their own property. So that you can have a piece of it that people can say, I have this tree, or so many trees on my property. So it can add to the city database, but it, it can't get into the actual city trees. It's maybe like a separate part. It's part of that, I didn't notice, uh, these are public shade trees. Town is now planting trees, setback trees. So how does that relate to public trees? Well, I think we just define it in the scope. You know, but, uh, mm -hmm. I think we just define it in the scope. Who we hire or who we go to bid on. Um, 
which probably, maybe, I guess, here's what usually happens. This estimate is tamale, or rich smith is tamale, and Molly decides whether or not it's something that should come back for a like full application, correct? Like, so we have our attempt to apply, and then it's like, yes, good, please do a full submission. And then we can kind of go into greater detail with what we actually want to do. Correct? Yeah, and I mean, you can, you can go in. Um, you might find that easier just so you can spell out, you know, what are the fields you're interested in, how, how is Rich going to use the, the whole week for you to go to whatever system has got that, there's just that, whatever. Um, yeah, and um, we also we have an accomplishment report form, kind of looking at sort of the other side of the project, like how will you evaluate this? In the, in the doc, in the application? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, it's like the last thing you submit, but it's probably one of the first things you should So if you get a complete application November 1st, it's not that okay. November 1st is the deadline, so yeah. we should. But October 1st, I mean, we, we want to see that this first, but we, I don't know how much it's going to change. Yeah. Um, you know, we just want to make sure it's not projects that would be appropriate for a grant You know, but it's already straightforward. So does this look like it, it's sufficient to you, Molly? Do you have any comments? Um, I would I would want to take it back and okay. read it more closely. Um, but it you know it, it looks fine. It's like a quick plan. It's um, not the full application. Like yes, this is what we're going to yes. do. Exactly. No, I get that. Um, I just have um, one recommendation, Andrew, in the sentence, um, the sentence, the last one says, it should be noted that the city has established a line item for funding the PSTT and the goal of the dot dot. Um, I think it's actually for funding public trees because we're not actually funding Okay. So that would be my only suggested change. Otherwise, I think it's very good, and I personally don't have any.
Okay, and I'll just I'll just let you know you have about 15 minutes. I can push it a little bit. Okay, so well, just keep I'm your time management and know that we don't have to figure this all out today. Of course. So this of course. is just a first mm -hmm. a first pass. Of course, course. absolutely. Yeah. Of course. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll read down the, Yeah, or or before we start, I guess it would I refer to final thoughts. Both Rob and I like sat together and um, we realized that you know we would like to or we assume we would like to form a larger, more comprehensive volunteer program in North Kansas uh, with the Tree Commission to you know, do all kinds of things. And uh, but we felt like that was this huge kind of nebulous project and we've got this money in trees that we just bought. So we decided to just like zero in on this is just the plan to get these trees in the ground and see how it works and maybe we reuse some of it and maybe we don't. So that's the caveat to start with. So uh, the goals are to plant 80 to 120 public trees in the fall. I didn't realize it could go in the spring. Um, to increase our presence in the community. You know, we have a mission to educate, uh, some way start development of this volunteer base and um, a bigger volunteer base, but also have a, a start a subset of volunteers that maybe would stick with us. Uh, and this is a, a training. And the you know, other just keep going. The other, uh, so um, kind of our target was. Um, or the format would be to have uh, some trainers to train some people we call leaders, and then uh, we would have a larger group of volunteers to come to the planting days. So our our thought was to have the um, the target dates of um, have some kind of training event for the leaders during early September, and have the planting through mid-September to the end of October. We know we could certainly plant later than that, but if we want to build a group of volunteers, it's going to be happening in November isn't the best time to have people out there plant. I mean, I certainly come to the end So, and then if we don't quite get it all in, you know, the DPW would have a window of time that was still put in. Um, so our idea was to have um, uh, Rob kind of figure out these numbers. Uh, we have four trainers that were experts in the field. Could be some of us, could be some other people. Uh, we would, on a separate day, probably Monday, uh, maybe two, if we had to fit people in, you know, have enough people. Uh, we um, get eight to ten people who who are designated as leaders and go out and plant trees with them and show them the best practices to plant trees. And they would have a, have a commitment to showing up for subsequent days or something like that. The trainers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, the leaders. The leaders. The leaders. Okay. Because, because they, they, they're going to work with the people who might just come for a day and not for the trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to re reuse them. Mm -hmm. Right. The leaders. So there's a commitment on their part. Right. So then, uh, then we get 16 to 20 more uh, volunteers, and their minimum commitment would be to plant one day. I mean, if they want to do it four days, they can do more days, and we don't need to make people. Uh, so, um, so one of the questions for the training day was, do we have one or two dates? Um, but the leaders would only need to attend one session. Um, and then, it would be actual tree, plant, tree planting and have some kind of piece of literature to do best management practices to give them uh, leaders. Uh, then the planting dates themselves, uh, the format we thought um, would be there'd be a one train leader, there'd be crews of three. So there'd be one train leader and two volunteers, and uh, they would be assigned to plant four or five trees in the morning. Um, in each kind of street or neighborhood, um, we felt it was a good idea to have two crews. So if the leader comes up with some weird thing that happened, you know, some 
thing is we thought about they've got another person with some kind of expertise to bounce it off of. Um, uh, and then the trainers uh, would be available throughout each planting event. We'd have maybe they'd be floaters or something, you know, available to help out or troubleshoot or whatever. Um, then, uh, so that's the basic format. Then uh, we have a lot of questions. <laughs> so um, these are more nuts and bolts things, like we need some kind of release forms, like how do we handle that, where do we get, you know, get the form, uh, tools, you know, what tools do we use. Uh, should there be, I personally feel like there should be some kind of reward for training to be a leader, whatever that is. I don't know, t-shirts or whatever. Uh, and then the question is, how do we purchase that stuff? Um, recruiting was a, a question. How should we go about it? If we have too many volunteers, who does the picking kind of politically? Is there issues? Yeah, I thought it was good to pause here and actually get some feedback because um, it's not too early to begin to get some, figure out who's going to actually help you with this. A little over a month away, and we're expecting to show up. We need to check it off on our calendars. And, and I think it kind of goes back partly to the tools. Is that, you know, who's, who's doing this and, and who are they working with? Regardless of volunteering, whether so they're volunteering uh, as volunteers to the J Tree Commission, to, to some citizen organization unnamed, uh, to the DPW. To the city of Martin. I think it's just to the city. Of they're volunteering for the city. Yeah. Right? Which means there has to be so, some person that would be rich. Some person has to actually be a main for these people to volunteer to the city. Right? Well, certainly there's some things we can ask rich. A lot of these questions under concerns and questions that are questions. Rich. Mm -hmm. Availability of tools, liability releases. Yeah. You know, and, uh, I don't necessarily think rich has to. You know, be everywhere and make himself present mm -hmm. everywhere. But, right. But but you know, he he obviously has to be an integral part of this. And the the basic understanding, one of the things we we're operating on is that you know, Rich would have a stake where the tree is supposed to go, pre-done, okay. and they would drop the trees. Uh -huh. and the other okay. the trees. So I mean, I I thought that was like a more important topic. Okay. Back to. Uh, being kind of rich, how rich will then, uh, I mean, how do we call up and ask people to volunteer? Who's going to call up that matter? Do we call up and say, hi, we're working with the DPW? Would you like me to? City Hall. I don't think we ever need to say specifically the DPW. Okay. So you can think we can call up and say, hi. Okay. So then in terms of, um, I don't know, fairness, I guess, or do you have some thoughts? I mean, how would that outreach? take place of first let's have a sense of fairness and second get people some people who have to find the trees and go What is your concern about fairness? Well I mean it would be easy for me to call up and get all the people who have already volunteered before and just say, hey you want to find trees. It's kind of leaving some some people out there. Well, remember that I'm going to be writing a press release, and it will be distributed by the mayor, and this will be front and center. So uh, that will tie in. So that, that helps to get that wrong. You could include it, too, in survey. I know that it's all um, prime where you go. It's a bond. It's a bond. Yeah. Uh, let me think about that. When is the press release? You know, I imagine the press release going out shortly before the survey goes out, so that's around the day. Yeah, well, you know, for people to, for, at least the first two to eight people who we were asking to basically Saturday morning in their calendar four times. Yeah. I, I, I personally yeah. think we want to get volunteers to choose the Yes, that's right. <laughs> and we have lots of volunteers we can already um, yes. turn to, and this is our first time doing this. So, so I think as the program grows, we can broader and broader in our reach, right. 
I mean, I think there's certainly no harm in, in trying a few targeted groups, especially in groups that think it's just great to reach out to these people. Really? What about having to sign up at the DPW for recycling or coming and coming? Yeah, we would just need someone to staff that. Yeah. And that just requires, you know, someone willing to volunteer to be at the recycling station on Saturday morning. Yeah, great, great. And you know, I, I have this existing yeah. list of 100, 150 people who have expressed some kind of interest in trees. That's how I put together the you know, the mm -hmm. citizen inventory. So I, um, I, I think we should absolutely start with the people who are already kind of early adopters. And, and have a successful planting, and then, yeah, that's, you know, other people will come. Just put it out there, as I'm clear, two student groups that I'm with, and easily I know some students, so. There's Great. plenty of uh, student bases that I can think of, those at least 25 students. Terrific. Okay, so we'll be, I think I've put you on my, my list, too, so we'll be, yeah. So I like your idea, Lily, really, of using the early adopters. We already have people who are, interested in the likely candidates. Um, just um, I, I appreciate your every question on uh, Rob. Um, and there may be other people who are interested who haven't connected yet. Just out of fairness, I would just want as much as possible to get the word out to everybody. So, so that those who aren't already involved can know Sometimes it feels difficult to get into a new group, you know. Mm -hmm. That in itself will create, I think, it possibly its own problems in that there would be more people volunteering than that. I suspect there will be more volunteers than that. I think it's probably just too. Yeah. Well, that's right. <laughs> okay, so um, why don't I, uh, by the next meeting, try to draft some kind of a press release? And it'll have a lot of blanks because we don't have dates tied in, but at least give you guys an idea kind of language we're going to use to get to the And, uh, you know, we, I, I think that we can set, once once this press release is put on, the, you know, it's got the mayor's seal on it, we can send it out also to, to whatever group you want to. I mean, the mayor's certainly going to send it out through his Twitter account and Facebook, but we can also send it out. But it's his official press release. We can send it out to So, we assembly a list of people who are meant to volunteer for the schedule for next time. I think as soon as you get, you get so scheduled, we need to nail down some really dates. Talk with Rich. Yeah. I think a lot of your questions here are addressed to Rich, so when he gets back from vacation. Right. But, but I mean, obviously, if we don't have dates, we want to go to Well, they can come in, Gary. Uh, you know, but yeah, yes and no. You know, they at least they get the idea that they're Right, right. So next time we need to publish that dates. You know, this if we have if we have more people who want to volunteer than we can handle that is a great problem. That's a luxury problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This one. So so what uh, so we should um, come up with some dates? Sure. People if you wanna fill in the blanks any more than you can with this, if you, if you wanna get any more detail. And then uh, I think your next step is to run this by Yeah. Get some of the questions answered, liability forms, tools. Um, the city may have some excess kit, you know, like Northampton's 350th celebration hats, which I have like four of them. <laughs> I love the hats. Um, you know, I don't think that we should get too hung up on trinkets. I, you know, I ran a very big campaign on zero trinkets because I think they can be very distracting and time consuming and costly. Um, so, and it's more stuff to go away. I, I um, think that good for instance what we have down as trainers to identify people like Jay. I would I would definitely approach Rick Harper 
who is an excellent trainer right. for planting, and he made himself, he's offered himself to us a couple of times. And then Todd Beal, who is also, um, he, he helped. Those two are great. They're great natural educators. Bob Goss. Oh, boy, I definitely love Bob Goss. What about instead of trinkets? What about gift certificates to um, local restaurants? Or it's just a whole new project to try to yeah. acquire those that I worry that we don't have time. Uh -huh. Okay, so in, in essence, we're going to get out of the circle and have to actually get a case and actually approach the people to, to fill some of the roles. Yeah, and be sure to one of you to reach out to Rich as soon as he comes back. When, when is he, do you know when he comes back? Yeah. All right, so, so um, we've, we've run out of time on this. All right, so the idea is to go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. that's good. Thank you. All right, um, I don't think we're going to have much time to talk about this. The criteria for locations, just, just to say that I, I really do feel strongly that I would like to see this commission have some input in, into the locations, and I'm not talking about at a street address by street address level, but more on a macro level, like do we want the, the um, planting to, to be on gateways? Do we want them to, you know, do we want to take the advice of, um, you know, Doug McDonald and try to emphasize foreign center? Or, yeah, I just want us to be thinking about where these locations are going to be, aside from what Richard told us, which is sites where trees have recently been removed. I think uh, we know places like Doug is our, the work has already been done and they've converted water into a place and they need trees. Those places are great. Center of Florence where nothing's been done and it's a place of time. Okay, so let's focus on where, where, where it's the best use of our time and the resources. Like, you know, gateways have just high visibility, so that gives the, just momentum to what we're doing. Um, biggest bang for the buck. And, um, and there are some gateways where the tree belts are really nice and wide and could support support trees. So, Jay, is that something you're thinking about, Paul? Or do you, are there a couple of people on the commission who can team together and be thinking about this question along with Rich? Any input we can get from people like Doug who know these spots already is would be great. Okay. We know that Rich is continuing to work on this list of places where trees have been removed and not in place. And and the other thing that I really feel strongly about, because I've seen it not happen in a number of cases, is the right tree for the right location, not just in terms of um, you know, will the tree survive there, but is it taking advantage of the full space? You know, I have seen really tiny trees that will never amount to any sort of canopy in places where it could support, you know, an enormous shade tree. A so, columnar one. Right, right. those ridiculous columnar ones that are just never going to fan out. And it just feels like wasted resources. Often flowers. Yeah, right. I've seen flowering trees in places that can support mature ones. And it just, we don't have that many places that can support, you know, huge trees that we really need to take advantage of. So I would um, I would like to make sure that we, we emphasize that to Rich that um, you know, our our goal is to increase our shade our canopy our shade trees. Okay. I will contact Rich. Okay, terrific. And then uh, the last thing is this public survey. I just wanted to uh, see if I could get a little bit of support on that. Because I think that the getting it on Survey Monkey, reproducing it, getting it to various sites throughout the city, I'm thinking places like the Senior Center, um, City Hall, and then and, and then actually analyzing the material is going to take a couple of
question is, this is like totally a new topic, um, pre-board being a topic. Um, there are resources for, and I know a lot of you were on the previous pre-board and on other boards, um, but there's a resource called Tree Board University, um, which is a self-paced course, um, free, developed by um, Paul Reed at a Oregon State, phenomenal urban course. Um, and it's a great resource um, for, for Tree Board members to get them to you know, working with your city, Thank you. 